As Starship's fifth integrated flight test nears, significant advancements are being made at Starbase in preparation for this eagerly awaited mission. Both Starship 30 and Super Heavy Booster 12 are currently undergoing final inspections and checks at the build site before proceeding to the next testing phase, the wet dress rehearsal. Kathy Corner, head of NASA's Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate, recently indicated that the agency is anticipating Flight 5 later this fall. This timeframe generally spans from late September to December, suggesting that the launch could occur in October or November, though it may experience delays extending into December. While the launch vehicle will be technically ready for flight following the wet dress rehearsal, the significant amount of ongoing work at the launch site and the continued rigorous review of SpaceX's license modification request by the FAA could lead to delays. Regarding the current activities at the launch site, teams continue working on the launch tower arms and related launch pad infrastructure, introducing a series of upgrades and repairs aimed at ensuring the success of the upcoming booster catch operations. Recent improvements include the installation of 17 cushioning pads along the length of each launch tower arm. These pads are designed to absorb impact forces and reduce vibrations, which helps in achieving a smooth and secure catch of the returning booster. Extensive reinforcement work is currently taking place at the spots on the tower arms from which the close limit bumpers were removed on August 25. These bumpers are crucial safety features that prevent the arms from overclosing and accidentally contacting the rocket during lifting and catching operations. The bumpers will be reinstalled after the ongoing reinforcement works are completed. In addition, teams continue installing doubler plates over the welded joints of the vertical members of the arms to enhance their structural integrity and ensure they can withstand the forces encountered during a booster catch. Work is also ongoing on the tower itself, particularly in areas where the arms will be positioned during booster catch operations. Structural reinforcements are being added to help the tower manage the immense stresses associated with catching and stabilizing the booster. The tower's roof is being covered to protect internal components from the intense exhaust of the returning booster. Attention is also being given to the booster and ship quick disconnect mechanisms, which provide electrical power and propellants to the rocket stages. Recent tests have confirmed the operational functionality of the booster quick disconnect. More upgrades and repairs to the launch pad hardware are anticipated as ongoing work continues. The recent modifications to the launch pad infrastructure largely result from data collected during booster catch practice tests conducted in June and August. These tests, particularly the slap tests with the arms and the landing rail compression tests, offered crucial insights into the tower arms' performance. They focused on various aspects, including the synchronized motion of the arms, their operational range, vibrations and stabilization efforts after impact, and the stresses and forces experienced during a booster catch. Test Tank B14.1, which was utilized for these tests, is currently being prepared at the Sanchez site for another round of testing. This new round of testing will involve an entirely different approach compared to the previous tests, as evidenced by the addition of crane lifting lugs to the tank. SpaceX seems to be planning a drop test where a crane will lift the tank and release it between the tower's arms. This setup will allow the arms to practice catching the tank similarly to how they would catch a returning booster. The specifics of this drop test are still being determined. It is unclear whether the tank will be dropped freely or if the crane will lower it at a speed that replicates the descent of a landing booster. In practice, a booster does not fall uncontrollably, its center engines help counteract gravity for a controlled landing. Therefore, it is likely that SpaceX is preparing for a controlled landing test rather than a free drop. We will need to wait for further details on their exact plans. Overall, the sheer volume of upgrades and fixes that the launch pad infrastructure has received over the past few months is remarkable. With additional work still required and further catch practice tests to complete, it is reasonable to expect a potential delay in the launch until later this fall. Given the high stakes of the catch attempt, SpaceX will only proceed with the fifth integrated flight test once they are fully confident in the tower arm's ability to successfully catch the returning booster. The FAA has recently addressed environmental concerns raised against SpaceX following a CNBC report dated August 12. The report alleged that SpaceX had repeatedly breached environmental regulations at its Starbase facility by improperly discharging pollutants, such as mercury, through its water deluge system used during Starship launches. The Texas Commission on Environmental Quality further substantiated these claims by fining SpaceX $3,750 for the unauthorized discharge of industrial wastewater into nearby wetlands. In response, SpaceX disputed the report's accuracy, clarifying that the water deluge system utilizes clean, potable water and that independent tests indicated mercury levels were significantly below the Environmental Protection Agency limits. 
The company emphasized that any excess water was captured in lined retention ponds to prevent contamination. After becoming aware of the allegations, the FAA found itself unable to verify the accuracy of certain representations made in SpaceX's license application and announced plans to release a revised draft environmental assessment. The agency has stated that all comments on the original draft EA, as well as those on the forthcoming revised draft EA, will be considered equally before making a decision on SpaceX's request to increase its Starship launch cadence. SpaceX aims to conduct up to 25 Starship launches and landings annually from Starbase. It remains uncertain how these latest allegations might impact the company's plans. I'll keep you updated on further developments in this matter. A recent study by Russian scientists suggests that the unexpected detonation of SpaceX's Starship during its second integrated flight test in November last year created an ionospheric hole in the upper atmosphere. During the mission, the Super Heavy booster stage exploded about four minutes after launch, following stage separation, while the Starship upper stage detonated approximately 150 kilometers above Earth. Published on August 26 in Geophysical Research Letters, the study details how the explosion of the Starship upper stage led to a temporary void in the ionosphere, an ionized part of the atmosphere that extends from 80 to 650 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Typically, during rocket launches, ionospheric holes are caused by chemical reactions between rocket exhaust and ionized gases. However, in this case, the shock wave from the Starship explosion disrupted the ionosphere's plasma without the involvement of chemical reactions. Remarkably, these disturbances traveled over 2,000 kilometers from the rocket's trajectory, a significant deviation from the usual pattern where disturbances primarily spread along the flight path. Moreover, the shock waves generated from the explosion were supersonic, exceeding the local sound speed. The study claims that this is the first time this type of hole has been created by a human-caused explosion, and such disturbances can influence satellite communications and navigation systems. They emphasize that novel ionospheric phenomena like this offer a valuable opportunity to learn more about the plasma-filled regions of our upper atmosphere. For SpaceX and other launch providers, the study underscores the unpredictable effects of high-altitude explosions on the atmosphere and emphasizes the need to better understand these interactions as they continue to develop and test their rockets. On Wednesday night, SpaceX made a significant move by relocating the historic Starhopper test vehicle from the launch site to a nearby parking lot. This relocation is part of SpaceX's ongoing efforts to clear space at the launch site, allowing for the expansion of the tank farm and the installation of other critical infrastructure necessary for the operation of the second launch pad. Starhopper holds a special place in SpaceX's history as the prototype vehicle that marked the beginning of the Starship program. On 25 July 2019, Starhopper successfully completed its first major test, a 20-meter hop, demonstrating the capability of the Raptor engine in a real-world setting. This was followed a month later by a more ambitious 150-meter hop, demonstrating the vehicle's ability to hover and maneuver at a significantly greater altitude. The success of Starhopper's tests allowed SpaceX to iterate quickly, leading to the larger-scale Starship vehicles that have since been developed and tested. As SpaceX continues to expand its operations at Starbase, the legacy of Starhopper lives on, not just as a historic artifact, but as a cornerstone in the development of humanity's future in space. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. On August 31, NASA astronaut Butch Wilmore reported hearing a strange noise coming from the speakers of the Boeing Starliner spacecraft, currently docked at the International Space Station, adding to the technical issues the spacecraft is already experiencing. We will pass it on to the team and let you know what we find. The Starliner, launched on June 5 for its first crewed mission, carrying NASA astronauts Suni Williams and Butch Wilmore, successfully docked at the ISS on June 6, but encountered thruster malfunctions and helium leaks in its propulsion system, delaying the astronauts' return. After extensive tests and evaluations, both on the ground and aboard the ISS, NASA engineers concluded that uncertainties surrounding the thrusters' performance made it too risky to transport the astronauts back on the spacecraft. As a result, the agency decided to return the crew aboard a SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule in February 2025, while the Starliner will return to Earth uncrewed, scheduled to undock from the ISS, no earlier than Friday, September 6. The recent speaker issue occurred while the astronauts and ground team were preparing the spacecraft for its return flight. Wilmore described the noise as a pulsing sound, almost like a sonar ping, and recorded it for further analysis by Mission Control. It's a strange noise coming through the speaker. I don't know what, what's making it, but uh, I don't know if it's something that maybe is connected uh, between here and there. 
making that happen, but uh, anyway, can you do that? All right, Butch, that one came through. It was kind of like a pulsing noise, almost like a sonar ping. Good recording. Thanks, Butch. We will pass it on to the team and let you know what we find. Two days later, on September 2nd, NASA released a statement clarifying that the sound had ceased and was determined to be the result of feedback from one of the spacecraft speakers caused by audio configuration between the space station and Starliner. NASA further explained that the station's audio system is complex, designed to connect multiple spacecraft and modules, and that such noise and feedback are not uncommon. The agency assured that the speaker issue had no adverse effects on the crew, the Starliner, or station operations, including the undocking of the Starliner from the ISS on September 6. SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket has resumed flight after receiving clearance from the FAA, following a brief grounding due to a landing anomaly that occurred a week ago. On August 28, SpaceX successfully launched the Starlink Group 86 mission from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, deploying 21 Starlink satellites into orbit. However, the first stage booster, which had completed its mission of propelling the upper stage into orbit, experienced difficulties during its landing attempt. The booster appeared to be on track for a successful landing on the drone's ship, but, shortly after contact, flames erupted from the base of the booster, and it tipped over and exploded, resulting in its total destruction within seconds. The wreckage from the failed landing was spotted when the drone ship returned to shore after the incident. Images of the remnants of the booster show the aft section and the nine Merlin engines mostly survived the incident, however, the rest of the rocket was completely lost in the explosion. Fortunately, no injuries or damage to public property were reported, but the incident prompted the FAA to ground the Falcon 9 fleet while an investigation was conducted. SpaceX engineers have since been analyzing data from the booster to determine the cause of the failure and to implement any necessary corrective actions. The video footage of the failed landing suggests that a failure in one of the landing legs may have contributed to the mishap. This issue might have stemmed from the booster landing at a higher than intended velocity, potentially caused by issues with engine burn timing. Two days after grounding the rocket, on August 30, the FAA announced that SpaceX could resume Falcon 9 flights while the investigation remained open, provided that all other licensing requirements were met. Wasting no time, SpaceX launched two Falcon 9 rockets in quick succession on August 31, marking a record turnaround time for the company. The first launch lifted off from Cape Canaveral, deploying 21 Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit. Just 65 minutes later, another Falcon 9 lifted off from Vandenberg Space Force Base, also carrying 21 Starlink satellites, setting a new record for the shortest time between two Falcon 9 launches. This rapid succession of launches demonstrates SpaceX's ability to quickly recover from setbacks and maintain its ambitious launch schedule. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.